Hi, my name is Luis and I welcome you to this JavaScript course for beginners. This is the first video. In this video, I'm going to give you the introduction of JavaScript. Now, let's say this is your web page. Before we start writing some JavaScript, let's get some core concept cleared up. It's very common to see JavaScript referred to as one of the three core languages of web page. You have the HTML markup language for content and structure. What's your headline? How many deviants are in your page? How many paragraphs do you have? And what are the content of those paragraphs? And then the CSS, the style sheet language, which stands for Cascade style sheet. What font does the headline use? What's the background color of the page? What's the width of the div? And then the JavaScript the programming language for behavior and interactivity. What happens when you mouse over a menu? What happens when you type the wrong value in the form field? How long a photo slide takes to move from one image? JavaScript is a programming language that you will often hear as a scripting language. And sometimes you will hear some developers dismiss JavaScript as just being a scripted language. And what they mean by that is that JavaScript is intentionally limited. I won't be able to write a desktop application in JavaScript the way I might do in C++ or Java or .NET or Objective-C. JavaScript only work inside another application, the web browser, whether that's IE or Safari on the Mac, Firefox, Chrome or Opera. They all have the JavaScript engine inside them. The operating system runs the web browser and web browser contains a page and the page contains the JavaScript. JavaScript is a dynamic computer language. It is lightweight and most commonly used as a part of the web page whose implementations allow client-side script to interact with the user to make dynamic pages. JavaScript has object-oriented capabilities as well. Let's talk about client-side JavaScript. Client-side JavaScript is the most common form of the language. The script should be included in or referenced by an HTML document for the code to be interpreted by the browser. It means that a web page need not to be a static HTML. It can include programs that interact with the user, control the browser, and dynamically create HTML content. Well, JavaScript client-side mechanism provides many advantages over traditional CGI server-side scripting. For example, you might use JavaScript to check if the user has entered the valid email address in the form field. The JavaScript code is executed when the user submit the form and only if all the entries are valid, they would be able to submit to the web server. And JavaScript can be used to trap user-initiated events such as click on a button, link navigation and other actions that user initiates. There are few limitations of JavaScript. We cannot treat JavaScript as a full-fledged programming language. It lacks the following important features. Client-side JavaScript does not allow reading or writing files. JavaScript cannot be used for networking application because there is no such support available. And JavaScript does not have capabilities of multi-threading and multiprocessor. Now, there are a few advantages of JavaScript as well, such as less server interaction. You can validate user input before sending to the page to the server. This saves server's traffic, which means less load on the server. Immediate feedback to the visitors. Well, people who sign up on your website, they don't have to wait for page to reload and then they find out that they forgot something to put. You can create interactivity. Well, on the pages you see that when you take your cursor on the menu and it just pop out. So that kind of interactivity can be done by JavaScript. Now we have richer interface, you can use JavaScript to include such items as drag and drop components and sliders to give a rich interface to your site visitors. Now what do we need to work with JavaScript? Well JavaScript is a language for browser. So you need to have a browser installed and I'm pretty sure you have one of the browser installed in your PC or whether you're on a Mac, you must have a Safari. On a PC, you must have IE. So I'll be using Chrome throughout this course. And next thing we need is a web development IDE. There are so many IDEs available for free online. 
So I'll be using Atom and I'll show you how to download and install Atom in the next video. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you have any question, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, let me know in the comments below and make sure you join our Facebook groups for programmers. I drop a link in the description and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the course.